Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And in my last tutorial, in my last video, I showed you how to make your text styles and your dimension styles. And now in this video, I would like to show you how to make your multi-leader styles and your table styles. So let's jump right into this video. So when you're making leaders, there's actually two types of leaders I, I mostly use. There is the leader with just text on it that you can just um, show something you want to describe. Or there are leaders to make part lists. And with these leaders, you're just numbering parts so that you can describe on the list. And you can also say how much of them you have. Like this one, you have one, one part. Actually, all of them are one parts. And you can also add dimensions if you like at the end so that the person who wants to make this little cabinet would know what the dimensions are from each panel. So they have two types of leaders. And also, to make this part list, you need that table we were talking about. That is why it's so important to have your leaders and your table match each other. So first of all, let us start with our leader. So in this drawing, the drawing we used in our last tutorial, we don't have any set uh, leader styles, multi-leader styles. So to begin, let us start by pressing manage multi-leader styles. And here we only have one, which is a standard leader you get from the standard text you get from Autocar, which is called standard. And now we will click on new and here we will call this one leader underscore one. We will start with standard as that's the only one we have. And then we click OK, continue. So I really like to have it straight. You can also have spine, but it'll be swiggly. I rather just have a straight leader also by layer layer by layer here you can choose with which type of symbol you like i would suggest the same type of arrowhead you have in your dimensions to also leave it be consistent throughout your whole style so meaning in dimensions you had a close i had a close filled arrowhead so for my leader i will also choose a close filled arrowhead like how I said, less confusion, less um, different types of shapes in my drawing, so which makes my drawing less, um, um, more easy and clearly to read. Here we can see the size of our hour head. In our dimension cell, we had a, our hour head on double. So here we will do the same. And the break side, we will do one as we did the same in our dimension because the break is actually the same as the breaking in dimensions. When you have overlapping leaders, then it will break it. Or if you have dimension that are overlapping with leader, you can also break it. Here we have the maximum leader points because let's say you have one leader, you begin with one, but you want to add more of the um, leaders to one text. So instead of having to um, so here you can choose the amount you can, you're allowed to have. Let's just leave it at, it don't have a maximum amount. It will just add as much as you like. The segment angle is actually the angle of, um, this part. So we would just leave it without an angle. We just leave it how it is. Automatically include landing. I like this because it will make a landing like this. So that's very nice and neat. So all my texts are horizontal, even though my leaders are all kind of way. And if I don't include it, then it will be connected like this. So it'll just look like a simple line. It could be mistaken by part of my drawing. So with like this, it would look more neater that this belongs to this. And the landing distance to be consistent, let me start at one. 
overall scale is the same and let's just see contents the mo this is your um, text now we can select our text by default it has standard but as we already made our textiles we will select also one as you can see it's very neat we want to keep it horizontal the text color we want it to be by layer as you can see the text height we cannot select the other text height because I automatically selected from my textile one always justify to level we will leave this this way and no frame just as my, my dimension style no frame I would like my left attachment to be I like to underline my top line that would be like this and the same would be for the right attachment. So that means if my lead is on this side, it will underline. If my lead is on that side, it will underline it too. The landing gap, let's just start at one and see how it looks. And extend leader to text. Yeah, we'll just keep it at that. So now we have made our first leader style. Now let's try this out. Mine is it's one on one, so it looks very small compared to this one, but this is one on ten. So let's just put it next to the one on one styles that we had already done. As you can see, see this is this is actually I clicked once, so I want to stop here, and then you can just right click and press enter. It will automatically create this landing and it will pop up my text editor. So here you can enter your text. Here also you can change your text style, but since this is one-on-one, -on -one, don't change it. Just keep it the way it is. That's the reason why you made a text style of dimensions, uh, a multi-leader style with a text height to it. So it will be consistent throughout your drawing. So don't change this or else it won't match the size anymore with your leader. So just to see if it just as it is, this one is called, let me type in leader. As you can see, it's nice and neat. It matches my text height of my one-on-one -on -one, and my arrow has the same size. I have a nice landing and my landing begins here. This is my spacing, this piece here, and my text begins here. And it will be under my text, which looks neat. So now since we had our first one and we like how it looks, let us do our second one, which is one on 10. So here again, we'll press new, delete. We start with one on one. Now we're going to one on 10, continue. First of all, let us start here. So here we will just multiply everything by 10. 10, 10. Contents will be one on 10 and landing gap 10. And that was my one on 10. Now let's do a one on 100, continue, times 10, times 10, times 10. The text style will be one on 10, one on 100, and here also times 10. The same we will do for our one on two, started with our one, so here we will multiply everything by two. So my size of my arrow will be four. Here will be two, 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 one on two, and two. Okay, and here we will make a leader, one on 20, starting well with two. Since we have over two now, then we just have to multiply everything by 10. So here we just add a zero, 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 zero. We like one on 20, of course, and zero. So now we want to have one on five. So here we have to multiply everything by five, of course. Let's start with our leader format, which is five times two is 10. 5 times 1 is 5, 5, 5, 
content 105 and fun and then here we will do a next one 150 starting with our 5 to make life easier that way we can just multiply by 10 this is 10 10 10 10 and contents 150 and here 10 so let's start with 50 now to do our one on 500 even if you don't select it correctly you can always change it here to start with continue one on 1000 no i mean to say 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 500 and times 10. so now we have our leaders that doesn't change size just have a a constant size and now we want to make of course our default leader starting with one the smallest one so here we can say default meaning you can choose a size you want by just selecting your over all size in our properties when we're drawing we will leave all this like this so it will start nice and neat the only thing here we want to change this text to default as you can see here that text height you can now change this and set like before you could not change it because the text would be one on one but since we deselected the default text height it will automatically leave you change it but we will leave this on 2.5 so it could start out looking good and then you can just choose the overall uh, over, uh, scaling. so now we have this now if we select this we copy this copy and we paste it to copy paste you just have to select something whatever you want to copy type co for copy you click OK, then you click a corner or whatever, and then you click where you want to place it. So that's how you copy using your command line. Now, since I will check this one to see if the default works properly, now I will select leader to default. As you can see, it doesn't change because it's one on one automatically at first. But then if I come here and I choose my overall skill, oops, my overall skill, and I decide I want it one on 10, as you can see, it does multiply everything by 10. And of course, when your, your leader is much bigger than your leader line to say, it will, well, your arrowhead is much smaller than your leader line it, your, your arrowhead will disappear but if you stretch it long enough it will appear again and here you can see that now this is the same height as this because remember this was one on ten so since we multiply by ten you can see it's the same as this one because all its properties it multiplied by ten if you don't choose to the default what I what we made and just choose the leader one and multiply that by 10 the text won't change so if I multiply by 10 here oh the text does change actually well it would basically be the same but either way is go to have a default value because then it will multiply everything by 10 and then you're you're on a safe side because not all just do this like if i do this one according to me it won't change the text height so if i go by overall scale where are you overall scale to oh wait a minute this one was a default as you can see here textile dimension style default so if i select this one then this is a mention style one on one and I choose an overall skill of where is it here of 10 as you can see the text 
stays the same because the textile is set to one on one. So then you would have to go here and then also change the textile to make it uniform again. So sometimes it's best just to leave it how it is. Then you know you have more control of how your leaders will look and how your dimensions will look and how your textile will look by just selecting one of the textiles from your drop down menu. So now we will, I will also show you how to make now the part list leader. So these guys here, right here. So let's go back to my empty drawing and go again into my manage multi leader and let's start with one. I love to start with one always because this is my base. So instead of calling this a leader, we will call it a part of one, starting with leader one. And let's press continue. And now here, this can stay the same if you like. If not, you can do a spine, but I rather it's straight. By layer, everything will be the same. The only difference is this. So instead of being a multi text, which is this text, I would want it to be a block. And a block means just a circle. The circle is a block with uh, attributes in the middle. So I like this one, of course. This one has one text in it, and this one has two texts in it. Depends which one you like. I added this one because I mostly just put in numbers. And of course, the center um, attachment will be from the center, but I want it from my insertion point. I want my color to be by block and my scale to just remain one. So it won't scale it. So that's my first one. So now if we test this now, it's selected on part one and we draw a part leader, enter. Now it will prompt to enter a number. I will enter one. The only thing I don't like that this circle is way much bigger than my number. So you can leave it like this if you like, but I find this takes up too much space. And as I said, space is valuable because space causes congestion and congestion just make the drawing look less clear. And if the drawing is not clear, you it will just cause mistakes. So to change the, the, the size of my circle, I would have to go into my block editor because this is a block. As you can, as we saw in our management, modify, this is a block. So since you selected this block, let's go in our inserts and in our block editor. Just click block editor. And here we can see the circle. This one is the first one that we selected, the one with two numbers. So while you select the different types, AutoCAD will automatically add the block to your drawing. So this is the one I chose with one text in the middle and I will open it. And this is my, this is actually what it is. It's just a circle with uh, attributes in the middle. So first of all, to change the size of my circle. I don't want it to be radius eight, but I will want it to be radius five, let's say, for example. You see, it's much smaller. My text will still fit within the block and it can fit more or less, give or take two characters and it will still fit properly. Then we will check the position justification of my text, which is my attributes. Here, my tag, it will prompt automatically tag number. You can change this if you, if you like. You can just put number if you want. And it automatically has a value of one always as default. But I want it to be a default value of one. My text um, style, I want it to have a text style of one on one. As you see, one-on-one, -on -one, because of course we're doing the one-on-one. -on -one. 
I want it to justify from the center of my text. So like if it's smaller, it will be in the middle always. And what else do we have here? Of course, the height is from my text, from depending on my text stuff. And I don't want it to be by block, but by layer. I want it to be by layer. So let's see what else do we have here. I don't want to be upside down backwards or invisible or anything like this. So just leave the rest of things how it is. And it seems good. So now when you're done with this, how you like, you just press close block editor. And of course you have to save it. Do not discard, but save it. And of course it will look like this at first, as you can see, it's much smaller. My circle is way much smaller. It was still here and now it's, it's more compact. The height is quite good. I mean to say it's, it's okay. So now what we can do now is draw our next one it has one uh, kind of like a glitch in autocad that when you're you change uh, properties or the dimension style it won't adhere it at one time not everything at least the landing it won't so when you draw next one and press enter and it automatically as we change the default number to one it will automatically start at one and you can see here the landing is correct and not as this one this one is not bad but just that as i say autocad has a glitch with this it's kind of like a problem in autocad i can't i can't do i can't say much about it but if you draw it again it will be good so that's um that's 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 basically your part leader so now the same as the rest, we're going to make the others part leader. One on 10, continue. And the only thing we have to change now is my, no, I actually have to change everything again. So here we have to change one on 10, one on 10, not one on 10, but multiply by 10. And here we can, Click OK, close. Now I realize one thing that you cannot select now the height of my text because the text inside the block now I select it to be um, one on one. But if I draw one on 10, then it won't look good. Let's see. I draw it big enough, else the leader won't work. Oh no, it had it had it properly. So why isn't my leader working? Modify. Oh, this one I will scale on ten. I'll have to scale it on 10. This one was 1, 10, 20. Okay, it's properly. Let's try this one more time. How big does it have to be? I know I actually cannot multiply by 10. We'll leave it at 1. We already scaled it by 10. So since we already scaled by 10, then we can scale this also by 10. That will be 100. So as you can see, it's already scaled. So if you want, we can just descale this one from 10 to 1 and here we can scale it to oh, 10 this looks okay now I think it will work so here you can see is move this one aside now it's consistently the same size as my one on 10 leaders 
as you can see, it's, it, it's good. So now we do the same thing for the rest. New, one on 10, one on 100. So here we will scale by 10, more. Here we won't scale anything, just leave this at one. The landing will be 100 and the size times 10, times 10, and of course times 10. So if we close this and we do one on 100, this one will be much bigger, as you can see. Press enter, automatically it will be on one, and this is one on 100. So it scales everything uniformly, and it looks neater that this and this is the same size, this and this is the same size, this and this is also the same size. So let's continue. Let's do one on, um, one on two now. Modify, nope, new, one on two, continue. And here we will scale by two. Landing will be also two. This scale will be on one. This one will be four and this one will be two. And we will close this now. And this one also we'll press new part one on 20, continue, by 10, 10, 10, and 10. And now we will do one on five, starting with one, which is the easiest way to multiply. One on five, that's the contents, one on five, here will be 10, 5, and 5. And that's it. And then the 1 on 5, we will make 1 on 50. So multiply everything by 10, 10, 10, 10. Not scaling by 10. And here you have to scale by 10. And now we will take the 50 and make it 500, continue, and here is the same way, times 10, 10, 10, and 10. So now we have one more, new, part, default, starting with one, as the others, we won't scale this by one, just scale by one, landing, everything will stay one. The text will also be one. Uh, actually, this one is not really needed since we didn't select the text. So let's just leave this one out. It says that it is in use, is it active now? So just set this one as active, set current, and then you can delete it without having any problems. Okay, so now we have made our leaders, we have made our multi uh, dimension styles and our textiles, and also our part slash leaders. Now, let's start now with our tables. As we saw when you're creating these part leaders, you also need a table to go with it. Then you can show your part list and what it is and which number corresponds to which part. So now let's go back to our empty drawing. Let's select table to create a table. It start out with standard. Standard is just the default in AutoCAD and here we can click launch the table style dialog. So you start with this, then you press new and we will call this one table underscore one. Continue. Now 
this is preference. I like it to be down. So every all the data will be down and not up. So I will leave it on down. It looks neater. And this was just a selected to start it from whichever one. Like you can select which table you want to start with, but we just we started already with standard one. Now here you can select the different cell styles for each and every type of uh, row. So this is your title row, this is your header row, and these are your data. The data has many data, but you only have one header and one title. You can also decide not to have a header, but just start one time with your data and also to don't do these at all. So we will leave it like this because yeah, it's good. It's good the way how it is. Now, if you want to still change the header that you don't want it to have a header, you can just choose here data and then it will just convert the header into a data row instead of a label. And the same would be for your title. Instead of a label, you just want to change it into data, but we will leave it at label. So it will show the same way how it's shown here. So let's start with your data. Since we're working one-on-one, -on -one, most of the stuff will be good. So I would just say one, one. My margins will be one, horizontally and vertically. We weren't merged cells in my data. And my text height will be actually default. Why I'm choosing default? Because I find that your data or you can also actually start with text one and it would just be one, two, two and a half, the height of these. But I like the data to be a little smaller. So instead of doing one, two and a half, which is the one on one text height, I will start on 1.8. The text will be by layer and the angle will just be zero. So now we will go to our header. Now our header will of course have to be a little bigger than our data. So let's start with default. And this one, I like it to be, let's say, you know what? I like it to be two and a half by layer and zero. And let's go back to data. And let's just set this one to two and a half. And alignment, of course, no filling of my cell. I want my alignment to be middle center to begin with. Well, it depends on the row, but you can always change it just like Excel. It works generally the same. The format would just be a general format. You can also decide my data will also be always uh, currencies or decimals or stuff. I just leave it at general. So any value you put in will, will it, it will accept it it won't convert it to anything else the type of data is just data and one and one margin the text we already selected the text it will be one on one and the border of course it will be by layer by layer and by layer won't it won't have double line and this is just good as it is so now let's go to our header which is this part general will be no fill I want it to also be in the center, the middle of a center, a label, the margins. I want it to be also one. Don't take up too much space. The height is two and a half, as we already said it. And here also by layer, by layer, by layer. Now let's go to our title and we will do the same again. Center, check, general, check, and margins one now here we will also have to select default the this one was two and a half so this one i will make let's say four yeah four yeah won't be much di difference but it still will have a little difference because this is your title it's supposed to be like bigger than the rest and of course my border I will be by layer, by layer, and by layer. Now, by text, 
general, I mean, let's see, where is it? I, you want to merge this one. As you can see, it's already merged. It's already checked and merged. If you do this, then it will not have one title, but we have three titles. So I do want to merge this because this is a head, the, the, the title of my table. And that is how actually this is done. This is good. Just how it is. And this is my table for one on one. So now we will do the same for the rest, which is one on 10. Continue. So starting off with uh, data by 10, multiply by 10. The text height will be one on two. Nope, one on 10. The angle will be, of course, the same, and the borders will be the same. So basically, only these two we have to change. And let's go on header. The text height will be 35, since it's multiplied by 10. The general, this will be the margin 10 on 10. As you see, it changes automatically, so you could preview if you like what you see. And now let's go to the title. And here also my margins will be 10. My text height will be 40. And that's basically it. So now we do one on 100, starting with 10. So we can just multiply by 10. Here again, general will be 100. Here, this will be one on 100. And the borders, you don't need to do anything with borders. Header would be also margins 1, 100. And the text height will be 350, which is also multiplied by 10. Then we have our title, which is also multiplied by 10. The text height will be also multiplied by 10. And this is good just as it is. So now let's start again with one on one to do our one on two. Let's continue. And here again, by general, we do time two. Text height will be one on two. And the borders is just good as it is. Oop, sorry. Modify. I have to do the rest, of course. Times two, times two. This will be times two, which is seven. And the borders is good. And then the title, general, times two, times two. Times two is eight and the border is good. So that was my one on two and then now my one on 20. Continue. General times 10 times 10. Here also one on 20. And now we go to the header general times 10 times 10. Text height is also times 10. And that's good. And now our title times 10 times 10 times 10. And you can see is uniformed again. Now let's do our one on five. Starting with our one on one. And here again times five, which is five, five, one on five borders yeah you don't have to change the border size it's good as it is times five times five two and a half times five is 15 15 17 and a half and of course the angle is good now let's go to our title five 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 times 20 five times four is 20 and that's just good. You can see here that it matches. It looks good. The title is big. The header is a little smaller. And the data is the st standard size. As the rest of our styles. Now here we will do one on 50. Continue. Again, general. Times 10, times 10. One on 50. And now we'll go to our header times 10. 
here times 10 so it will be 175 and that's good and now our title times 10 times 10 times 10 here you can see it's nice and uniform again so you're done and now we will do the last but not least which is one on 500 continue times 10 times 10 here one on 500 that's good and now our header times 10 times 10 and then our title times 10 times 10 and you're done basically let's just do our default because there's also a text sort which is default text so you can multiply everything here we will choose default which is two and a half and of course that's the only one because the rest remains the same and it will multiply everything together so that was all my table styles as you can see now if i type hello and click next these are my headers number etc and these are my data and this works just just as um excel you click in your cell now i hope this one is clicking properly well you just could type also if you like and you can see it's good and if i drag it down you see it counts down just like same exact same as excel it's basically excel built in in autocad to make everything in one one environment let's just go back to here and i here you can choose when you're inserting your table and here you can choose the call the amount of columns the width it will automatically choose a width for you the data rows and your height how much rows lines you you want to start off with so when you press this you can choose here and what type of style so if you the top style if you want to have your title and then header and then data or you want to have everything data as you can see or you want a header with no title to the top just the data so here you can play with it a little bit so every time you have to insert a table you can choose what you want and also you can link data from a table of course excel from an excel file you can link but we will get into that in the next video that's more Inform that's way more information also object data in the drawing from data extraction that's also more complicated when your data that's extracting data from your your drawing autocad also does that very well so now here you can select which one you want which style you want and that's the way how you would insert a table into your drawing now i see that I actually don't like the fact that it's let's go back into modification let's go into data and here in my data in general I chose middle and center but still for some reason it still have my data on the left and why is that I don't really know why AutoCAD is doing this to me but still even if you select the table this tab will appear in name table cell and here you can still choose to change the just in case the location of your text so I, I want it in the middle AutoCAD so here it's back in the middle 
So here is the same, basically it's the same as how you would use Excel. If you're familiar with Excel, you can drag, like if you select two cells at the same time and drag, it will count. If both cells are the same value, let's say here, this one is one and you select both of them together and you drag, it will remain one. Basically the same thing how Excel would work. And if we put this one, this table move next to this, these right here, you can see that the text here is the same height of my text one on one, but these are a little bigger because this is my title and this is my header. So that is why, that is how you can distinguish between header, a title and header and data. But of course, if you want, you can change the title to a different color. I don't suggest it, but you can just play with it. If you want, you could always have this red, even though a uh, white, even though my, let's say my table is a different color. If I want my table to be red, you could choose that the text remain white. But that, that, that is something you would have to play with if you like, but I suggest and I advise if you want this, do this by one before you make all of these, or else you would have to change each and every one manually. So start when you start by one, make sure it is exactly what you like. So when you make the others, you don't have to constantly have this tedious work of having to change each and every one. So here you can change the color, as you can see here, you can change the color. So if I change it to red um, and press this, of course, you see it changed to red, but you have to press this or else it won't work. But that's only for my title cell. And I would have to do the same for my header cell, red, and then choose, of course, all the borders. And let's say my data cell, yellow, all the borders. So, or if you don't want all the borders, let's say go back to red and I want it yellow, but I don't want this line to be yellow. You would have to then choose this one, the bottom one, left and right, and leave this one without choosing it. But make sure you make the first one how you like it to be because else it will be a lot of work to go in each and every one and have to change those settings one by one. So it's better to make the first one exactly how you like before you even start with the others, because then if you make the first one correctly, then it will save you the time in the others Then the others you won't have to change. So guys, I hope you enjoy my video and I hope you learned something because as I said before my first video, EasyCut is here to help you and teach you and show you different tricks and stuff that I have learned throughout the years using AutoCut. And this is actually just a, well, I, I would say a small gesture to learn to, to do these styles, but it's not very small because it will help you a lot. So even though a lot of people don't use um, textile, I must say more and more people are using it. It is very important to make these, take the time to make these textiles. I showed you each and every one, how I made it. You can pause the video and try different shapes, see how it works off for you. But I would suggest take the time to make it. In the next video, I will show you how I made my own ticks. So meaning these. But I will be in the next video because this is a little more advanced. If you're new to AutoCAD, I will start off with what AutoCAD has to offer, which are these and those kind of stuff because making these is a lot of trial and error. So I would suggest starting off with what AutoCAD has to offer, which is a good bit. Let me show you these. Modify, Where, oh no, sorry. 
modify as you can see out this these are mine but Altica has a good amount you can use so start off there and then then look forward to more other stuff but for starters just start off uh, trying stuff so you can see what you like what works for you and your drawing if maybe nothing at all you can also choose none if it makes your drawing look more better more less congested the more congested your drawing are the less clear your drawing will be for the reader especially if it is on paper where you cannot see color most of the time if you don't print in color so just think about those stuff when you're setting up your styles so that when you set up your styles correctly you won't have to ever change them again and it will make your life way easier and you can work a lot faster so guys i will leave you for now and in the next video i will speak about um, layers which is also very handy if i go here layers so let's get into that the next time and i will leave you for now don't forget to subscribe guys and thank you for watching till next time